Okay, so we've injected a radio frequency pulse, we've stimulated protons, hydrogen protons inside the brain or the head. Uh, then we stop the radio frequency pulse, protons relaxed back into M0. As they do that, they emit energy. And with our RF coil, we captured that energy, right? We captured the strength of M0 on the transversal plane. Let's look at it. What would we see? Surprisingly enough, so far, what we'd see would look like this. Think of it this way. Um, if you had a, you know, you, you had a camera and you took a picture and, uh, and your camera had only one pixel, what would the picture look like? Well, it would look like one big square and the color in the big square is the average color of all the colors that were inside the picture. Well, that's exactly what happened with our MRI. See, we stimulated all the protons, all the hydrogen protons inside the head. When we caught the echo back or we snapped the picture, all we get is the average of all the protons inside the head. And so we get one number, hence this big, uh, this big cube. I should also say, much like in, in something like a camera, you call this a pixel, right? The unit of resolution is a pixel. In fMRI, because it's three-dimensional, we call this a voxel or a volumetric pixel. Now, how do you make pictures with a camera? Well, you don't only have one pixel, you have multiple ones. So if you had four pixels, right, your image would look something like this. And the more pixels you add, the greater the spatial resolution, the greater the detail of what you can see. So that's why when you look at, uh, when you look at the reviews of, uh, of phones and they talk about the camera, they'll tell you how many mega or gigapixel something might have. What they mean is how many pixels are, are there in there so that you can see the color from every tiny, 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 tiny piece of the field that you're imaging. Now, we need to do exactly the same with our MRI. We don't want one giant voxel with the average of all the protons that we stimulated. We want, much like with our camera, we want high spatial resolution. So we want to split this giant cube into as many tiny, tiny cubes as we can. So that's how we're going to get spatial resolution inside uh, the MRI. Now, how do we do that? Well, we use gradient coils, ingredient number three of our MRI machine. And there are three gradient coils, one per direction. There's a gradient coil to get resolution in the Z direction. There's one in the X and there's one in the Y. Let's take them one at a time. So the first uh, gradient coil is often referred to as the slice selection gradient coil. And it typically is in the Z direction. So from feet to head. Now take our MRI machine, as you remember, in the typical case for research MRI machines, they are at three Tesla. So if you're a proton here, what is your resonating frequency? Well, from the Larmor equation, you know that it's gyromagnetic constant um, over two pi times the strength of the magnetic field. It's it, three Tesla. So a proton right there would be spinning at 127.73 megahertz. What if you were a proton here? What would be your resonating fr frequency? It would be gyromagnetic constant over two pi times B0, i.e. 127.73. What if you're a proton here? Gyromagnetic constant divided by two pi times B0, i.e. 127.73. So all these protons are resonating at the same frequency. So if I were to inject a radio frequency pulse, which would have to be at 127.73, so they can push them at the rhythm, at, at their resonating frequency, I would be exciting all of these protons. See, what I want to do is I want to find a way to only excite the protons that are up here, or only excite the protons that are here, or only excite the protons that are here. Now, to do that, we use a Z gradient coil. Now, the Z gradient coil creates a new magnetic field, uh, which, for example, might be weaker at one end, let's say towards the feet, and stronger at the other end, so towards the top of the head. And see, let's just say for simplicity that this new magnetic field, which of course will add up on top of our B0, 
uh, has a strength of zero right here, just to make the math easy, a strength of 0.01 Tesla right here, and a strength of 0.03 Tesla right here. Just to be clear, these numbers are entirely made up. They just help me uh, with the example. So if you were this proton right here, what would be your resonating frequency? Well, gyromagnetic constant over two pi times three Tesla plus zero, right? Because the, 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 the new magnetic field created by the Z coil, at this point we stipulated is zero. So the first proton will still be, will still be resonating at 127.73 megahertz. How about if you're the second proton? Well, you'd be resonating at gyromagnetic constant over two pi times three Tesla plus the strength of the, of the, new, of the magnetic field created by the Z gradient coil, i.e. 0.01. So the second proton is now spinning at 128.15 megahertz. How about if you're the third proton? Well, you'll be resonating a gyromagnetic constant over two pi times three Tesla plus 0 0.03 Tesla. So you'd be resonating at 129.01. See, thanks to the Z gradient coil, what we've done is we've created a linear mapping between where a proton is in space along the Z direction from feet to head and what is its Larmor frequency and what is its resonant frequency. In a sense, it has become much like a piano keyboard. In a piano keyboard, there's a, there is a linear mapping between where a key is in space and what is the frequency it produces when you strike it. So now I've managed to divide my protons along one direction so that I can select which proton to excite with the radio frequency pulse. For example, let's say that this is the head and we stipulated that the Z gradient goes from the bottom of the head to the top of the head. This means that the protons down here might be resonating at, let's say, 127.73 megahertz. Then if you keep going a little bit, the protons here might be resonating on average at 128.15. And then the protons here at 128.58, and the protons here 129.01, and the protons here 129.43, and so on and so forth. So what I can do thanks to the Z gradient is I can decide to excite only protons from one of these slices. That's why we call it the slice selection gradient. In other words, if I now were to put in a radio frequency pulse at 127.73, I would I would only excite and push into the, um, into the transversal plane protons in here. Remember, I told you that in order to push protons away from B0 into the transversal plane, you have to push them at the right frequency. The right frequency is whatever their resonating frequency is. Much the same as when you're pushing a friend on a swing, to push them effectively, you need to push them at whatever uh, rhythm, at whatever frequency they are swinging. So now my radio frequency pulse, instead of exciting all the protons from the head, only excites protons in here. And then I can put in a radio frequency pulse at a different frequency, maybe 128.58, and I would excite only the protons in here. I have to say that's not exactly how the MRI machine works, but it for the example, it suffices. So now, I, thanks to the Z gradient coil, I have a mechanism to selectively excite protons at a certain level in the Z direction. So in other words, I've created resolution along the Z axis. And you might also see that if I did the gradient steeper, I would be able to divide the head into even smaller chunks, into even smaller slices. And so now my radio frequency pulse at 127.73, instead of exciting a big chunk, a big slice, would only excite this tiny slice down here. And again, my, my radio frequency pulse at, let's say, 130.28 megahertz would excite only protons in this slice right here. So that's why we call this a slice selection gradient.
because it allows me to say I'm only going to push in the um, in the transversal plane protons inside this slice. So now when I receive the signal back, I'm only receiving signal from protons in here. So this is the Z gradient coil. Then we have the X and Y gradient coils. Conventionally, the Y direction goes from the back of the head to the front of the head. Now, the, the Y gradient coil is a phase encoding coil, which means instead of changing the frequency of protons, it'll change the phase where protons are. In other words, where protons are pointing as they precess and they resonate. Okay. So if this were somebody's head looking from above, actually, this is a slice. We've excited one slice of uh, protons inside the brain, and this is the slice. We're, we're just looking at it from above. The Y gradient, sorry, the Y gradient coil creates a gradient along this direction. At the bottom, at the back of the head, there's a certain phase. So now protons at the back of the head are in a certain phase. In the front of the head, they're in a different phase. So now if I know your phase, where you are in phase, I know where you are back to front. So we've now created resolution along the y-axis. And the third gradient coil is very similar, except it's again in the frequency domain, no longer in the phase, but it's the exact same idea. So here's our slice of the brain. If we put in the third uh, gradient, it will go conventionally from left to right. So this is the, the x direction from side to side. So now I have a mechanism not only to select only protons in a certain slice in the z direction, but also to know where protons are front to back in the y direction or side to side in the x direction. Let me put this together and hopefully it will make it a bit more concrete. So here's our slice of head seen from above. And uh, we are going to say that we have nine protons. And of course, when I put in the radio frequency pulse and then I listen, I don't want to get the average from all radio for, from all these uh, protons. I want to get a, the number for this proton here, and I want it to be separate from the number from this proton and from this proton, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying as if this were a camera, instead of having one pixel, we want to have in this case a three by three, right? Or we want to have nine different pixels, one per proton. So to do that, we're first going to put in the uh, phase encoding um, uh, gradient. So from the back to the front in the y direction. What this means is that the protons at the front of the brain will be in a certain phase. At a certain point on phase, the protons in the middle will be at a different point, and the protons at the back will be in a different point. So now I've created, thanks to the y gradient coil, I've created a linear mapping between where a proton is in its phase and whether it's in the back or the front of the brain, much like we did with the Z gradient coil. So now I've changed the phase of the protons to create this linear mapping. The last thing I'm going to do is put in the X gradient coil, which is another frequency gradient coil. So now what I'm doing is I'm essentially putting the protons in the left row I'm sorry, the protons in the left column in one frequency, the protons in the middle will now have a different frequency, and the protons on the right will be resonating at yet another frequency. And the principle behind this, it's exactly the same as, this, as the slice selection gradient. Okay, so I'm, I'm adding a new gradient. So now along this direction, along side to side, protons will be resonating at a slightly different Larmer frequency. So now if you look at this, essentially what I've done is I've turned the, I've turned this slice in a bit of a matrix. So if I know your phase and frequency, I know exactly where you are. And see, the trick is, not, is that now the MRI can reconstruct exactly the M0 for this proton and distinguish it from the M0 from this proton and distinguish it from the M0 from this proton, et cetera, et cetera. And of course I say, this proton, what I mean is all the protons that are 
around here, and all the protons that are around here, and all the protons that are around here, et cetera, et cetera. Because see, all the protons here will be resonating at frequency one, whatever the frequency is at this point of the X gradient, and will be at phase one, right, right here. Frequency one, phase one. The protons that are here, well, they will be at a different frequency. They will be at frequency two and phase one. And see, the protons that are in the middle, they will be at frequency number two, and they will be at phase number two. And these protons will be at frequency number three and at phase number two, right, these protons here. And finally, this proto the protons that are around here, they will all be at frequency one and phase three. So essentially, I've created a scheme where if I know your phase and frequency, I know where you are in this space.